All right, guys, welcome back. Today, we're going to talk about setting yourself up for success, right? So you could be the best player in the world, but if your controls aren't set up right and your visuals, all sorts of things, you know, if something's jacked up, you're going to have issues. And so I'm going to go through my settings and give you some tips. In the episode, we're going to talk about the basic controls, you know, your keyboard and the mouse. We're going to talk about proper video setup. We're going to talk about some audio tips. We're going to give you some hardware suggestions, and we're going to go talk about some visual adjustments that you can do. And I'm sorry, guys, I am an NVIDIA guy. I cannot speak for AMD, but uh, there are quite a few little tools that NVIDIA has that can help you out with this game. In the background, I'm going to go ahead and let some uh, Russian jets play out. This is the LA-15. In a little bit, you're going to see some Yak-30 gameplay. Enjoy it in the background. These are very, very capable jets. All right, let's get right to it. So you might be surprised to hear that my controls are actually fairly stock. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to link in the description, uh, at least my, my config file. I've always saved my config file in case something goes wrong or there's changes or I want to switch to the dev server. Highly recommend you guys, once you get your set up, once you get your controls the way you like them, go ahead and save those. That's going to be my first big tip because when you reinstall the game or you go into the dev server, your, your controls are going to be jacked. So save them. Anyways, so let's take a look real quick at what my controls are, at least in the settings, and uh, I'll walk you through at least a little bit. Again, like I said guys, my controls surprisingly are fairly stock. A couple big differences that I've done, you'll notice that H and 9 are my two big keys right now. you notice that 9 has my rockets and my missiles. Middle mouse, which is also your scroll wheel, has the, uh, the missile lock. And air brake and bombs and boosters are all bound to H. You'll see a little bit more about that in a minute and understand why I did that. My throttle is a little bit different. My shift is uh, throttle up, my space is throttle down. But uh, the big thing you got to pay attention to in here is like changing your multiplier and changing your, um, your sensitivity. And what this does is I can hit my space and I can hit my, um, my shift. And the throttle response is, is very, very quick. So that is huge, um, at least for me. Especially when I'm in a you know a, a heavy fight or something like that. If I just tap my space bar, it drops my throttle almost to half. That's especially important when you start doing like supersonics. You know, you really have to really pay attention to your throttle control in supersonics. All right. Next thing I talk about, you know, we had H and 9, right? So I had those. They were kind of weird buttons. Well, at least the H wasn't, but the 9 was, right? So I have, you know, a Corsair mouse. This is a pretty standard mouse. It doesn't have a million buttons on it. It's nothing fancy. I love this mouse, but here's the thing. So my H is bound to my sniper button. And then my 9 is bound to that, that little button on the top. The back button is what they call it, right? So that fires my missiles. And then the sniper button is what activates my air brake, my boosters. It's a very quick, very easy to find button, right? It's perfect for when you're in a heavy dog fight. You know, you got your missiles, whatever. Very, very handy. So you know the other thing that I gotta say is my W and S, that's my elevators. My A and D, that's my ailerons. And my Q and E, that's my rudder. And I think most of those are stock. I've played with these for so long, I don't remember what is stock anymore. And I just have everything saved. That's about all I gotta say. Also, my right mouse button um, activates the radar. If you use the radar, it's kind of handy. It, I'm not sure I'm going to keep that setting because sometimes it gets a little bit annoying because I have to double tap it to get rid of it. Moving on. Let's talk real quick about audio. So with audio, if you do not have a headset, I highly recommend that you go get a headset ASAP. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. You really do not need a fancy headset. Just your standard two-channel headset is more than enough. And then there's one thing that goes with that. Go into your audio control settings, at least for the, the sound and music. Turn down most of the volumes and turn up the enemy aircraft volume. This is kind of like, you know, if you're a first-person shooter, remember how you, you always change the volume so you can hear footsteps better? Well, it's a very similar kind of situation in War Thunder, right? So the headset gives you very good situational awareness. You know when somebody's behind you. You know when someone's getting close. Maybe you're in the clouds. Get a headset and then turn enemy volume up. That's huge, guys. That really, really is going to improve your situational awareness. That's all I got to say about audio. There's really not much else to it. Moving on to video settings. Now, I'm just going to say this right now because I know that there's going to be a bunch of you that have potato PCs. And I'm sorry there's not much I can do about it. Hopefully, hopefully someday you guys can upgrade. But if you don't have a potato PC and you can at least get a decent frame rate, do everything you can to at least get 60 frames per second. 
Now, 60 frames per second is a magical number because most monitors are at least 60 hertz. That means that they actually show 60 frames in a second. So if you can get 60 frames, that means you can turn on VSync, or if you have a newer NVIDIA video card, you can run FastSync. I highly recommend if you have the ability, now this is a, a GeForce GTX 10 series or greater, they all have what's called FastSync. Use it. Use FastSync if you can, trust me. You'll thank me later. But try your hardest to get 60 frames per second so you can get VSync. What this does is it really helps with your situational awareness because if they, if you don't maintain that 60 frames per second, the text, everything on your screen is kind of a little bit choppy and it's really hard to read numbers. It's really hard to read distances. It's hard to gauge what's going on around you. Do everything you can to get that frame rate up. I don't care how many settings you have to drop. If you have to run ultra low quality, trust me, it's still going to be better in the end. Also, if you are a console player and you are flying on your TV um, and you really want to get better, try flying on a monitor. It's a lot better. TVs have lag in the input. TVs, they're, they're not made for gaming. They don't have a high response rate. You know, unless you got a fancy one. Plus, you could be sitting really far away from the TV and you're not going to make things out. So get a monitor. Enough with video. On to visual adjustments. All right, little things that I've done in this game that have improved my gameplay. So one of the things that people always ask me is why I run these fuchsia, purple, violet, whatever hell color you want to call this on my enemy nameplates. The reason is... The stock color is red. Now red obviously correlates to danger, sure. That makes sense to have your enemy markers red. But wait until you get into a sunset map similar to this one or any any darker map that has red tones to it. Red blends in and it actually hurts your situational awareness a little bit. So I picked this ugly fuchsia color. Not because I liked it, but because it doesn't blend with anything else. It does not blend with anything else in this game, so it's perfect for situational awareness. Make sense? Alright. Another thing that's really handy, and some of you guys, I'm sorry if you have an AMD card, you will not get this ability, but NVIDIA players, if you have one of the newer video cards with, uh, with NVIDIA Experience, or no, GeForce Experience they call it, there is a setting you can do, if you press Alt F3, and I'm sorry that I cannot actually record this for you, but Alt F3 opens up a menu that allows you to do color corrections to the game. And what you can do is you open up this menu, you create a brightness and contrast filter, and then you boost the gamma. And all of a sudden, night maps become day maps. This is what it looks like. And just be warned that it doesn't make the enemy markers light up better, but it does help you spot dots. And this is huge. So I sneak up on people all the time and they kind of think I'm cheating sometimes. And maybe because this wasn't built into the game I am, I don't know. But this is an option offered by NVIDIA and it does help you in the end. Anywho, I don't have a hell of a lot more to offer you when it comes to the basic tips. Um, you know, if you, if you have a great top end setup, you might have picked a couple things up from this. If you don't have the greatest setup, you might be struggling to get that frame rate. That's That's huge too, like I said. Console players, don't forget that you can plug in a keyboard and a mouse to your um, game set. That's huge. Um, honestly, D-pads, analog sticks in this game, you're, you're never going to be able to compete as well as a keyboard and mouse player because the mouse is just so much easier to aim. So keep that in mind, guys. If you have a spare keyboard and mouse, plug it in your console. You're good to go. If you guys are curious, I'm not here to boast, but if you're curious about my setup, I do run a Core i7 processor, Intel. I run 16 gigs of RAM. I have all SSDs throughout my hard drives. They, uh, I got a couple deals. Amazon was putting out one terabyte hard drives, SSDs for 100 bucks. I might have picked up one or two. I also have a GTX 1080 uh, for the win. It's an EBGA uh, GTX, very good uh, GPU, works fine for me. There's no need for me to update to a 2080 right now and I don't really want to spend the money on it. So the 1080s are great for this game. This is, this is the outcome. Also, if you guys haven't noticed, I run ultra wide. This is 21 by 9 aspect ratio. I have a 34 inch ultra wide monitor. Love it. Absolutely love it. I will never go back to a 16 by 9 monitor. If you guys have any more questions, feel free to ask me in the comments. I will answer about everything I can when it comes to control setups. But these are the big ones. These are what matter to me. 
Um, all right. Anyways, thanks for the support, guys. Really appreciate it. We just broke 10K subscribers. Couldn't have done it without you, of course. 20K next, 100K. Would love to see that. We'll see you around, guys.